Hi everyone, I'm Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about vibrational acoustics, talk a little bit about the difference between vibration and room acoustics. So let's start with some definitions. Airborne sound energy, we're all familiar with that. You're actually hearing that right now, hearing the energy coming out of my mouth being transmitted into the room. It's being picked up by a microphone, but that's a whole nother electronic process. So it's energy that is created vibra vibration that travels through the air. So no, no, no difference or uh, difficult uh, concepts to understand here. Structure-borne vibration is a little bit different. When that airborne energy then strikes a structure, it changes and converts to more of a vibrational energy. Now, the signatures of airborne versus vibrational energy are a little bit different. They're similar because they're both sound energy, but they're a little bit different in some variables. Let's look at a few of those variables. The frequency response, obviously their signature. If you're traveling through the air and you're a sound wave and then you strike a surface and then you become more vibrational energy, you're gonna look different. It's like hitting a wall. When cars hit walls, they look different. They change their shape. Well, it's kind of a drastic example, but I think you get the point. When that airborne energy hits that wall, its looks are changed, its frequency response has changed, and that depends on a lot of factors in the wall, and also how much energy is, is striking it. The speed, obviously, airborne energy we know is 1,132 feet per second. Okay, so we know that. When the energy strikes the surface and, and hits a solid, then we have to now add in the density of the solid to the speed calculation, and obviously it's going to be slower. Air is much less dense than concrete, wood, or almost any other substance. So we get a speed variance in, in that. So we get a frequency response difference and a speed difference. Those, those two things are really important in constructing barrier technology. What does barrier technology do? It does exactly what the graphic shows. It takes airborne energy, converts it to vibrational energy, and through the process created inside the barrier, not only changes the signature, the frequency response, because we already discussed that just by hitting the wall, that's happening. But if you design the wall correctly, you can take maybe a signature that goes like this and get it pretty smooth. So the composition of the wall has a lot to do with the speed and the frequency response of the signature. I hope this isn't too complicated, but try to, try to just make it simple. The, the energy on one side of our wall is really different than, than, now it converts back to acoustic energy on the other side, but this process here is vibrational. So when we build our barriers within our rooms to keep sound in and to keep outside sound from coming in, both are critical. We've got a break point of about 125 cycles. The technology requirements to stop energy, um, if this is 100 cycle energy coming in, the technology we have to use in this construction of this barrier is vastly different than energy above 125 cycles. It's about three times the cost, three times the weight, and much more installation methodology. So that's why we do tests find out what the strength and what the frequency is of the noise that we're dealing with in, in uh, outside situations. So that defines really what frequencies we're trying to stop and at what amplitude they are, how much barrier technology we incorporate, how we build it. So layering technique, and, and we'll talk about that sometime in another video. Sound treatment versus noise management. Don't confuse in vibrational acoustics. Don't confuse sound treatment, absorption and diffusion technologies with noise management treatments such as barrier technologies. Barrier technologies keep sound out, keep the sound in the room in. Treatment technologies just deal with the sound energy within the room. Barrier technology deals with this and this. Two different things, two different sciences, two different treatments, two different ways to go. So don't confuse those. Foam will not stop bass. Foam will not stop low end energy. So there's a big 
urban myth uh, that, that confuses sound treatment and noise management technologies. I hope you enjoyed Thank you. today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up so I know that it had value to you. And please, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. Alternatively, if there are other topics that you wish to discuss, discuss or see discussed in a video presentation, send me a, an email, info at acousticfields.com, and uh, we'll get them on our list and, and get them done for you. I release a new uh, video about every week, so stay tuned to our YouTube channel and keep uh, updated on our new videos.